Hey everybody, welcome to today's Wireside Chats brought to you by Vology. I am very lucky to have with me today uh, one of the smartest guys in the room, uh, usually in any room that you end up in, uh, Matt Jolly. Uh, Matt Jolly is actually uh, one of our uh, solutions architects, our senior solutions architect um, in the IP networking and even some of the security world uh, as well. Uh, Matt uh, comes from a very strong background in Cisco and an uh, um, extremely um, uh, a strong uh, subject matter expertise in uh, brocade uh, uh, networking as well, especially in the VDX side. And I thought that I would bring Matt in on a conversation um, that uh, has been something that I think has been a conflict ever since uh, iSCSI started to come along. So the topic on this one is is uh, the storage protocol uh, war that seems to be going on. And maybe war is a strong word. There's certainly a lot of very sweeping opinions on which protocol is better. Uh, I think, Matt, you and I, we talk to enough IT professionals every day where um, we get these sweeping statements um, that fiber channel is, is by far and away the only and the best and everything else is an attempt to become the holy grail. And then we hear iSCSI folks say that fiber channel is dead and it's going away. Uh, and I think that you have to have your hands in a lot of design opportunities like Matt and I do to realize that this is one of those answers um, where there really is um, going to be the best fit for a given scenario. The beauty of what some of the protocols bring uh, to this is that economy makes things more available um, and then of course technology makes those things perform arguably as fast as other things. Um, so what I wanted to do is just kind of go uh, through a real quick uh, rundown. Right. Um, I wanted to start with Fiber Channel because iSCSI seems to have a lot more buzz surrounding it. Fiber Channel's been around since the one gig days. They keep doubling it one, two, four, eight. Now there's 16. 32 coming out soon. 32 is going to come out soon, so we're all going to have reasons to do another refresh on our Fiber Channel network. The positives on Fiber Channel that I think nobody is going to really argue with is that it is theoretically or physically uh, impossible to be a lower latency um, uh, storage protocol than Fiber Channel. And I can, I can just feel there's a million people ready to interrupt that statement. Let's just talk physics for a minute, right? I just have less encapsulation going on, and I have less uh, disturbance from my network. Um, and I know I can tell that you're ready already to jump all over that one. So that's, that's one, uh, is, is the fiber channel piece, uh, as far as the latency goes. The second one is um, that it is much easier to secure, right? And I think you've heard this one, too. I think we chose the word easier to secure because um, I don't feel, and you probably share it, it's that any more secure than an appropriately configured um, IP network. But let's go with easier, uh, more, more easily uh, secured. Um, and then um, the, the last one was it's less disruptive uh, to a person's data network or to, to the rest of their network. And obviously the answer to that is yes, if I put 400, thousand pounds of sand in my car that will be disruptive to my vehicle. Maybe I need to reconsider the vehicle mm -hmm. uh, for that. Um, so those are usually the arguments we hear uh, right. from the fiber channel side. Um, so why don't you go ahead and give me um, some of your input on uh, sure. on some of those statements of fiber channel. So so uh, the at some to some way agree with the latency uh, zero latency discussion with us. Yeah, well, no, I mean, actually, that, that used to be the case. Um, the new technologies with iSCSI switches uh, allows for extremely low latency. I mean, you get things like uh, Arista switches, you know, with next to no latency at all, just because of the way the architectures work, you know, super fast ASICs, cut through switching, things like that. Um, you know, iSCSI is a real contender at this point. You know, so, I mean, classically, fiber channels had an audit. It's a very mature technology that keeps, you know, uh, growing. Uh, a lot of places won't go away from it. Um, th there's good reasons not to. I mean, it's obviously very fast, very efficient, very secure. It's inherently secure by design. You don't have it on the same network. Uh, but what you're seeing is a lot of people are uh, they're in embracing iSCSI because there's things that you can do with it now. We, you know, speed, security, ease of deployment, flexibility, and some other stuff that we'll talk about at the end of this. That um, you know makes it a real player in there. You know, there's cost you know, benefits and things like that on there. So, I mean, we, we see both sides of that, right? Um, where somebody would say, no, we can't do fiber channels. It's kind of like the telephone wars where you had the old analog guys versus, you know, hell no, we're not going to do voice over IP. And they fought tooth and nail to, to, you know, not go to that route. And now you're seeing a lot of voice over IP stuff. Right. 
But in that same vein, voice over IP can be done very wrong, and they're like, see, it should have been analog phones. They work better. <laughs> so it's the same argument, right? Fiber channels are fantastic technology, but if you look at what people are doing with their network, that's where you make that real decision. You know, there's kind of I want to focus points. on that because I think yeah. you know a large part of what brought this discussion to fruit is you know even some internal dialogue we have back and forth, and that's mm -hmm. healthy, right? It's always good for the customer. Um, for us to challenge each other, right. um, I still feel that you know, from a physics perspective, that's the one stake that Fiber Channel can put in the ground is, is that just inherently, even though there are lightning fast switches out there, I'm still doing less to the information that's passing through, and it's still lossless. And I know you're going to have a response to that. Um, so it is, you know, in my eyes, going to be impossible for it to get to the speed. But I think the other argument is. Um, iSCSI and switching networks and some of the architectures that, that can help support um, you know, storage traffic um, actually make it so that they are able to perform at a level so close to fiber channel that maybe we couldn't even measure the difference. And at that point, right. why am I spending the extra money, right? Yeah. And we're not here to talk people out of fiber channel, folks. We're not trying to talk people off of it. We, we put it in very often. It does present a lot of benefits just from the perspective of if we have disparate groups, you know, if we have a networking group and we have a storage group, each has their own budget. The storage folks typically are going to have an opinion about the the network on, for, you know, as far as the network guys go. And, and then, of course, if there are ever problems where they, you know, where they have to reach over the aisle, uh, that could, that's a challenge that presents a management challenge, you know, for anybody that has to run those departments. And then the disparate uh, uh, budgeting, you know, I've got budget for a fiber channel network, um, but my networking. Uh, isn't happening for another two or three years or maybe even more. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're telling me that some networks may not be able to support iSCSI uh, traffic inherently because they're already highly utilized. Um, so Fiber Channel might be the uh, right answer there, right? Yeah. Uh, when we get over to the, uh, the benefits of iSCSI, which we've kind of touched on a little bit, um, one of the things that comes to mind, you know, before you even get technical about it, when you get into it from a perspective of, from a planning perspective or from a project um, planning perspective, um, it's definitely much more affordable for a customer to get into shared storage or upgrade their shared storage um, because they can utilize uh, something that's already there, right? Uh, versus considering the fiber channel. There's a, there's an often overlooked expense with fiber channel, which is the HPAs that have to go into the machines. We can um, argue that, though, too. Well, because there's iSCSI HPAs now. Well, not, not only that, though, there's also converged HPAs, which we can probably get into that a little bit, too. I mean, that's that's what makes it really tricky. It's all about application and end-user experience. So that totally blurs the lines now where uh, even if on the same network, all right, my storage guys want to have fiber channel, but my network guys want to have iSCSI, guess what? I can roll it across you the same both. infrastructure. My HBAs or host bus adapters can be converged, which means they can either do fiber channel or, or you know, native Ethernet, or even fiber channel or Ethernet mm -hmm. across the same you know device. So, you know, that's where guys like us come in to help kind of you know unclutter yeah. that. Say, what in the hell are you talking about? Yeah, and and if you have you know, this is a good another argument against iSCSI was you know, it's utilizing some of the resources on my host machines. Right. Um, and now there's an answer for that, which mm -hmm. is offloading initiators onto um, network cards. Mm -hmm. So now, just like on a fiber channel HBA, it's occurring on the iSCSI HBA. Uh, so um, I think one of the things we want to talk about, though, is cases where iSCSI presents a real advantage. Mm -hmm. um, and I think more interesting to the, to, to the rest of the group, you know, to those that are going to view this, what have we seen recently? And I, when I say recently, only two years ago did we start to really hear stuff about Ethernet fabric. Yeah. Um, and I know that when I started studying it, it smelled exactly like fiber channel. Yeah. Um, so we're starting to steal from the fiber channel protocol, right? Yeah. Um, and put this, can you maybe give us a little bit of, of color on on the Ethernet fabric? And, and I think that we're probably going to end up talking about the VDX. Uh, oh, absolutely. I mean, you've got uh, to, right? Fabric. You're kind of the leaders. Yeah. Uh, so, VD, so, so, cool thing about Brocade is they own Fiber Channel Market. They invented it. Yeah, yeah they invented it. Yeah. I think there was only one or two players that have popped up, and only one is still, you know, Mick Data coming on. Um, and, uh, you know, still you have uh, Cisco playing around uh, in the Fiber Channel game a little bit with some limitations in comparison to, yeah. you know, some of the other uh, Brocade series. Mm -hmm. um, but we stole from it, right, in the iSCSI world. And, and, 
one of the problems that we run into with storage is we still have to deal with spanning tree. We have to deal with all the networking issues and manage around them. Only now I have these big giant blocks of information traveling down the right. highway that I now have to manage yeah. and separate off. So maybe you could walk us through, you know, some of the best practices with iSCSI that will right. help us maybe reveal the potential to be at sure. speed latency of fiber channel. Yeah, so, um, yeah, when you get into the best practices, I mean, some of the pitfalls that people run into when they try to, dis you know, deploy iSCSI and, and can give it a bad rep is, um, you know, we're getting latency, you know, links aren't coming up right, we've got dropped packets, all this other stuff going on. So without even talking about Ethernet fabric, let's just talk a straight, you know, trunk best practices. Okay. Uh, going from a, a nice SCSI switch to a, a host, right? Um, you know, you want to make sure things like jumbo frames are enabled. Um, you want to make sure that you've got flow control. You know, these switches can do hardware flow control, which will match up to your HBAs or your, you know, virtual mix, VMware supports, and things like that. Um, you want to make sure that your speed and duplex settings are, are correctly set right. Those are all really easy things to set up, mm -hmm. but people don't know about that. I mean, we run into this all the time where we're having to fix that, and then all of a sudden it goes from this network sucks to, holy crap, look at the throughput on this. Right. Holy crap, it works. You know, and then if you get into Ethernet fabrics, you, know, you can do things like dynamically add links and, you know, uh, kind of back where you were saying earlier, you know, Ethernet fabrics, if you take the part, the fabric part, that's the same exact thing that Fiber Channel had. It's derived directly from that. So what these engineers have done, let's pick on Brocade for a second, you know, they invented Fiber Channel, they bought a, a Foundry and got all their IP stuff, and their, their whole intention was to roll out a product like the VDX, which is what they have, and marry all the Fiber Channel legacy in with all the cool features that you can do with Ethernet. So, you know, you can do all the, the routing features and things like that. that you well, that's a, that's a great point, Matt, right? Um, routing Fiber Channel is a pain. Right, and dealing with it, right? You can buy expensive FCIP routers. Yep. No there are even some, there's some, uh, with a lot of vendors, I can't even synchronously replicate over FCIP. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of limited on the features I get from my storage array. iSCSI is, is a routable protocol. Right. Well, and you can do uh, you can do uh, what they call data center bridging or DCB. Uh, that's a powerful feature of that. Uh, an emerging technology is called VXLAN, where you can extend data centers across miles. So yeah, iSCSI allows you to do a lot of that stuff without having to have an FCIP you know routed gateway in essence. Um, and you can tunnel you know fiber channel over those Ethernet links. Um, and we know that you know there is latency over a distance, but engineers are doing some amazing things with that. I mean, as it matures more, you're going to see some cool stuff going on with that as well. So, so if I have some legacy fiber channel going on, um, yeah. the the concern I have I have a four gig network right now. I don't want to rip and replace it. Or uh, if we're looking at a network rebuild, this is is. ISCSI can present an option yeah. there, right? Yeah, I mean, and, you know, whatever vendor, like, you know, you can do it with Cisco Nexus. We put our new ISCSI storage solution in, and yep. we still have our old one, but we still t we just tunnel that through. Uh, yeah. We have to well, you have cool technologies, too. Okay, we're worried about security. Well, you know, there's a, a cool service provider technology called VRF, or virtual routing and forwarding, where you can logically isolate, you know, different pieces of your network. They don't even know that they exist with each other. And instead of having to have that physical separation, you have a logical separation. It's the same thing, but just with less physical boxes. It's the same idea as when you, you know, virtualize servers. You know, people used to be scared to death that how is this going to be, per, you know, good performance or secure? Well, we're doing the same thing with networks now, you know, and, and we're really just kind of breaking it all down into just stuff living in software with security between it. So let's touch on, um, yeah, but fiber channels are lossless. Mm -hmm. um, so are Ethernet fabrics. Right. So I wanted to give you some opportunity yeah. uh, to sort of, because I don't know very much. Well, it's it's a fair process. argument. All right. I mean, if iSCSI on the face of it is native Ethernet, and native Ethernet is not lossless. TCP IP, that protocol, was not built for reliability. It was built for getting stuff moved really, really fast. From one place. So you have things like retransmissions and things like that. Well, lossless Ethernet, because it marries the fabric stuff, you know, from fiber channel with Ethernet, then it, it has stuff that goes on under the hood that prevents retransmission problems and absolutely ensures, just like Fiber Channel does, that the data gets where it needs to. I mean, you know, we all understand that your storage and stuff can't have loss. Even servers uh, take all your multicast stuff, too. They're designed with, you know, ultimate performance in mind. So they're very specialized for what they do. Oh, by the way, they just happen to have all the cool Ethernet underpinnings. So, your stuff going down to servers and storage is going to be handled differently than switch to switch or switch to another network sure. on that. Um, you know, backups can be the same way, but there's buffering and other things that you can do there. So when we say lossless Ethernet, 
doesn't lose frames or packets or anything, it really doesn't because it can't. You know, there's the understanding that it's got to be as reliable as fiber channel. Best way to do that is, you know, we educate customers by showing them here's how it works and, and here's what it does and show them the tests. Um, I know in our labs we'll be doing bake-offs between fiber channel and iSCSI so we can yeah. show it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Kind of put that to rest. And it's, at the end of the day, it comes down to knowledge. You know, people are very comfortable with years of experience with the technology. Getting them to change to another one can be, you know, difficult. But, you know, that's where guys like us really can help out with that, you know, and, and help them at the end of the day decide which way they go. So some, some quick takeaways on this as we wrap things up. Um, so first of all, uh, those of you that voted for Fiber Channel, I'm one of them. Um, just so you know, I still hold an opinion, you know, that Fiber Channel is amazingly fast and that there is um, some value in keeping it separated from a network. But that's coming from someone that's not a network guy. So for me, it's natural for me to take the, well, I know what I'm getting. I know, I know how to design a fiber channel network and stand up these zones and, and create, uh, abide by the rules that are required, which are weird and different in comparison uh, to the networking world. Uh, and I still think that, you know, if money is of no object, um, you have to kind of start with the argument of why wouldn't I want a uh, fiber channel, even though, uh, you probably here's a secret. I sell fiber channel too. <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. But there's a reason why we're yeah. we're both sitting here, right? Sure. Because we have opinions on it. Yeah. I'm definitely a big fan of of iSCSI. It's helped enable getting this technology that's very important into a lot of small business, right. and and now we're seeing it even in the enterprise. Yeah. Probably one of the biggest arguments I get into now with IT folks is is talking about how in the world someone has a ninety thousand uh, IOP storage solution and is comfortable putting it on an iSCSI network. It's hard yeah. for people to, to compute. You and I just recently had a customer down in yeah. Palmetto yeah. Um, that uh, stood up a VDX fabric just to deal with uh, just to deal with the storage traffic and the I/O and the intense I/O is going to come down yeah. uh, on the storage array. So there's definitely some things we want to watch on, right? So from Fiber Channel, um, obviously zoning rules are probably the biggest uh oh that people run into. Uh, on why things can't talk to other things. Yeah, so you want to your imports and e-ports, right? Yeah, there's right. a lot of stuff you, you have to look at. You really want to pay attention to some of those rules on the fiber channel side. Always, you've always budgeted too little for your fiber channel network. Uh, I know this from HBAs. Um, for some reason, uh, everybody's become much more uh, comfortable with dual port HBAs instead of two single port HBAs. So we really want to keep in track. Those HBAs are 1500 bucks a pop, give or take. Um, so it's definitely very expensive. Those are the uh-ohs uh, with fiber channel. On the iSCSI side, right, and, and I want you to jump in and correct me. Yep. Number one, know your network. Yep. Before you drop uh, four ports to 10 gig storage on your network, yep. right? Um, would you agree that we, in the best situation, we want to physically separate a network? I know you can say this, arguably it's not necessary. You, you could do it either way. I mean, it, you know, at the end of the day, it all comes down to your application, right? And that's where we're going to help out with that. We're not biased either way. But yeah, I mean, best practices says, you know, you want to have a, a good mesh network. You know, you want to multi-home all your connections. Um, if you don't have the budget to actually physically separate it, there are ways you can do that. And, you know, the switches are very capable of it. But yeah, typically you'll see... They're isolated, and then maybe you've got a connection that goes through a firewall, and anything that needs to go outbound for whatever management or whatever on that can go, you know, out to the network. So yeah, you can still do the same design, and if you isolate your storage networks and your server networks from the rest of your actual network, um, even with the iSCSI switch, it does come out less expensive. Yeah, considerably less so, expensive, especially yeah. when we're looking at you know the hosts that are involved. Well, look at your HPAs you were mentioning. So even a converged HPA like a QLogic is. 180 bucks yeah. versus a native fiber channel, you know, dual port, which is $1,500. Um, you look at your connection types. Um, to my knowledge, fiber channel still has to use fiber, and you have to use those little special SFPs, which are expensive. Well, you can use direct attach on on a, a 10 gig, you know, one gig and 10 gig stuff, or even 40 gig. Yes, yeah. that's, that's like 150 bucks for a connection. You know, it's it's amazing the difference in cost and the you know the kind of economies of scale on that. So you definitely need to know whether your network is prepared. Uh, for the workload of storage, all too often we see vendors that aren't that aren't represented by a VAR or by a reseller with a trusted advisor in the middle. A lot of them will say, "Oh, you're fine. We we'll just tell you this this t this this storage solution. Ice because he's fine. We put it in there, and then we get phone calls on how to tune or fix the network. Get a good so network assessment first. You really do. You need to really make sure that your network is prepared for that. Um, the other, the second piece is obviously we want to separate the network. Um, 
I feel physically physical separation is definitely something you've got to evaluate. We definitely have many, many customers that are just VLAN'd out, and it's yep. working perfectly fine. Um, the yeah, problem, it depends on your application, man. That's, that's and that's that's, that's the that. that's the last point I wanted to make. Right, know your workload. You have to know and separate those workloads. We don't always want to assume that all the workloads are the same. And you have some workloads that are write once and read many, and you have some workloads that are highly transactional. And you may even find you need to tune those frame sizes. Not always is it going to be a jumbo frame. Sometimes it's highly transactional with small bits of information. And in that case, uh, maybe smaller frames or if there's traffic issues, because we always have to tune. Yeah. Isn't that one of the benefits of iSCSI is that there you can tune way. it. You can retune yeah. them. Well, I mean, you have, you have you know two biggest things. You've got your MTU size, which is your you know window size for right. your packets. Um, typically, like if you're taking a VMware environment, it's almost always going to be set at 9,000, and you'll set your switch to 9216, and you might say, well, "Wait a minute, that's going to be an MTU mismatch." It's not because with that, you know, you'll have the Ethernet overhead, and there's things you can do on your network. You want that little bit of overhead on your. On oh, your that's a great point. Okay. So, and it, the reason they can do that is they have deep what they call port buffers, so, you know, for buffering stuff. Uh, that's another important one too, isn't yeah. it? And we want uh, we can't go with chintzy port buffers on an iSCSI. No, you're gonna you're gonna you know they're high end high performance switches. They're fast A6 deep port buffers. Uh, you know you want to make sure not only your frame size but also for your storage you're looking at your block sizes, right? Are you doing 4K blocks, 8K, 16K? There's all going to tuning. Yep, that translates back up to what your you know frame size is going in and out of the switch. But yeah, you can tune all that stuff. You know, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do. Um, you know, it's different than the buffer credits and things that you had on a fiber channel type switch. Um, but on Ethernet fabrics, there's things you can do in the back end there as well inside of your fabric. So well, I may you may be turning me around, on it, right? Uh, I still I still feel feel very comfortable with fiber channel, um, and I think a, a lot of you folks that are watching, you know, maybe what we need to do is if we're looking at iSCSI, Matt's here, right? We can look at your network. We're certainly going to be honest and let you know whether we feel you're prepared to take on the workload that you describe. If you don't know what your workload is um, and you don't know the state of your network, stay away from iSCSI. As a matter of fact, I stay away from any storage until you get that figured out, right? Yep. Um, so, uh, folks, uh, I really appreciate everyone putting together the time. Um, we're looking for a lot of, of, of dialogue on this, so please be sure to post up either on YouTube or on Google Hangouts. Um, pay close attention to some of the stuff we had uh, in our background. Um, with uh, the uh, our, our uh, Twitter handles and also uh, some of our uh, wire side stuff. So check out all our wire side channels uh, as much as you can. Uh, so until then, folks, please post up. Give us your opinion on the blog, and maybe we'll have a second session with this, maybe even have some guests on to, to, to kind of deepen uh, the discussion. Matt, thanks a lot for making it. I really appreciate it. And, folks, thanks. we'll see you again on the wire side. Brocade uh, uh, networking as well, especially in the VDX side. And I thought that I would bring Matt in on a conversation um, that uh, has been something that I think has been a conflict ever since uh, iSCSI started to come along. So the topic on this one is is uh, the storage protocol uh, war that seems to be going on. And maybe war is a strong word. There's certainly a lot of very sweeping opinions on which protocol is better. Uh, I think, Matt, you and I, we talk to enough IT professionals every day where um, we get these sweeping statements um, that. Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's Wireside Chats brought to you by Vology. I am very lucky to have with me today uh, one of the smartest guys in the room, uh, usually in any room that you end up in, uh, Matt Jolly. Uh, Matt Jolly is actually uh, one of our uh, solutions architects, our senior solutions architect um, in the IP networking and even some of the security world. Uh, as well. Uh, Matt uh, comes from a very strong background in Cisco and an um, extremely um, uh, a strong uh, subject matter expertise in uh, is that it is theoretically or physically uh, impossible to be a lower latency um, uh, storage protocol than fiber channel. And I can, I can just feel there's a million people ready to interrupt that statement. Let's just talk physics for a minute, right? I just have less encapsulation going on, and I have less uh, disturbance from my network. Um, and I know I can tell that you're ready already to jump all over that one. So that's that's one uh, is is the fiber channel piece. Uh, as far as the late fiber channel is is by far and away the only and the best, and everything else is an attempt to become the holy grail. And then we hear iSCSI folks say that fiber channel is dead and it's going away. Uh, and I think that you have to have your hands in a lot of design opportunities like Matt and I do to realize that this is one of those answers 
um, where there really is um, going to be the best fit for a given scenario. The beauty of what some of the protocols bring uh, to this is that economy makes things more available um, and then of course technology makes those things perform arguably as fast as other things. Um, so what I wanted to do is just kind of go uh, through a real quick uh, rundown. Right. Um, I wanted to start with Fiber Channel because iSCSI seems to have a lot more buzz surrounding it. Fiber Channel has been around since the one gig days. They keep doubling it one, two, four, eight. Now there's 16. 32 is coming out soon. 32 is going to come out soon. So we're all going to have reasons to do another refresh on our Fiber Channel network. The positives on Fiber Channel that I think nobody is going to really argue with.